G'day, how you all going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I like to teach beginners how to paint beautiful and wonderful, lovingly lovely paintings in acrylic. Now today is a bit of a, well it's a special painting for somebody. It's a special painting for Liz Kane all the way in Ireland. Uh, she wanted me to commission a paint job or a painting for her and I've got the picture here she sent me so I'll be showing you that later on and I'll also get the size of the canvas I'm putting it on up there. Now I did ask her do you mind if I use this as a tutorial because it's the elements I like to paint and show my subscriber followers how to paint and she says yeah why not so thank you very much there and also the colors as you can see are also going up the screen now I'm making these colors up as I go you can use the same as me if you want to paint this kind of layout or you can um, use your own all right and there probably be a bit of mixing in here as well all right so get on over here and we'll get right into this all right so before we get started, I'll just show you the reference picture she sent me. It's got a sky, distant mountains, a lake, some closer mountains and a foreground. Those people aren't going to be in the picture. And she does want a bit more of a daytime cloudy sky rather than that stormy sky. Now using that as the reference, halfway is here, but I don't want my horizon line there. The horizon line to me in this picture is the end of the lake. Okay, so I've got it down here. Don't forget we're on a big hill side here looking down into this lake so that's i just pretty much drew a line across there and i've looked at the mountains and i've put my own version of mountains but i'm making them nice and pleasant sweeping they're not big jagged things okay and then the mountains pretty much make the end of the lake out here and so on there okay instead of me trying to draw the lake i've just done the mountains and the edge of them, as I said, has created the edge of the lake. So now I just want to paint in all the sky area with some retarda and craft paint ceiling white. Now this painting will give you a good idea how to do a basic landscape, waterscape, lakescape, whatever. I've got me craft paint, ceiling white, poster paint, whatever you want to call it. If you don't have this, just get some ceiling white from the hardware. And I'm mixing that with retarder. Retarder is an additive you add to your acrylics and it'll slow down the drying time. And I want to paint in the sky area so I can blend all my sky colours and clouds with a lot of bullshit going on up there, okay? So I don't need to put this paint all the way down there because when you're trying to paint over this sort of paint, as I've learned in the past, it can be quite daunting and lift and carry on. I've got Liz's name up there. I don't know if you can see it or not. But it was just to remind me as I'm filming who it was from. So the reference picture is from Liz Kane all the way in Ireland. And she wanted me to paint this. So this is a commission job. And if you feel, oh, you know what, you know, I want you to do one for me, just private message me on Facebook. Okay, that's what Liz did. And if you're not a friend, you send a message request and I'll eventually get it, okay? Now there we go, we've got that reasonably blocked in. See how it's all chunky and lumpy and, you know, nonsensey? Stroke it nice and beautiful. Beautifully does it. Nice, just get all those lumps out of there. There we go. Now I've just wiped my brush and I'm going to pick up the cerulean blue for the sky colour. And that white that's on the board is going to tone it, or no, lighten it up so it's not too cartoony and loud, okay? And I've just got some horizon polluted colours down here, grey and magenta. And I'll show you what I do with that. So we'll get all this crisscrossed into there. I'm pushing it into that white now, and I'm going to bring it down to the bottom. And if anything, you want that bottom area quite lighter in value compared to the top. It, that'll give you the sense you're looking in a sphere that round shape that the, we live in. Okay, so there we go. Now that's done. I'm going to use the tip of that brush and I'm going to stroke that now nice and softly. And I'm going to just stroke it like a gentleman. There you go, look at that. That wasn't too hard to do. These putter on a brushes are great for getting the job done. Play with it. I'm massaging it in. No rush in your artwork. Do not rush your paintings. There we go, I'm just crisscross it if you need to bring it down some more and just finish it off in a left and right motion just like that eh 
that is still wet. We still want it wet. And I've just washed me putter on a brush and I've given it a severe flogging. And I'm gonna grab just some of this magenta now, just on the corner of my brush there like that. And I wanna mix up this mid-tone gray. Now you don't need too much magenta. I just want it that hazy gray type. Let's put a little bit of blue in there maybe, just to see what happens here. And I just want this down the bottom of the polluted horizon line. There's not much on my brush. Now you can work out if you want to stamp this on. I'll stamp it on just like this. Where I pretty much want it coming up into the sky. I'm controlling, instead of brushing it on and pushing big brush marks into the painting, I'm controlling the layout, the footprint of this colour. So I pretty much want it there. I don't want to come all the way up here because it's all out there in the distance. This is what creates distance in your paintings, all right? I told you that for nothing. All right, done. Now we can use the tip of the brush. We'll give it a slight wipe, just if you wanna, okay? Because the tip of that brush has got nothing on it. Let's start from down here, and we'll get this blended. Now crisscross it a bit. You want that its own color. Control it and blend it into that sky. There we go. Nice and straight, don't bring it up here. You can soften the merging of the two colours with some crisscross strokes if you like. But there we go, we've got our nice... It gives a more of a realistic colour to your sky as well. Now we're going to add some clouds. For my clouds, I've got titanium white and I'm going to stamp it on with the appropriate fan brush, it's larger and a smaller size, and I want to blend it with my blending brush, okay? If you want these blending brushes and you want to learn and blend the clouds the way I do, private message me on Facebook and I'll send you some. So we're going to grab our larger fan brush, and I'm chiseling it on. I'm not just getting it all in there and have them blobs everywhere, because if I do that, the way I paint clouds, you cannot control it. So I chisel it on like that, you see? Now what do we want? I might put um, something just in the distance here. Very little. I could have used a littler brush. I'm gonna come along and make a body of a cloud. Now in this cloud, this is way back in the horizon, so I keep the top and I blend the bottom down slightly. Move your brush around and control what you're putting onto your canvas, okay? There we go. Let's just try that one there. Now, when you're blending, you need a rag or a cloth to constantly wipe your blending brush, okay? Now, let's get this camera right in there. Now, see, I want to blend the bottom of that cloud down into that grey, purpley, blue colour, leaving the top there, because why I blend the bottom, it's creating atmosphere, okay? And I always like to, on the edge of my clouds, for some reason, just pull a tail on them, just like that. That's just something a habit I like to do. There we go. Boom. That was nice and easy, wasn't it, eh? Now, you've got to wipe your brush, because if you don't, you're going to transfer paint where you don't want it. Now, back down here, let's pick up some more, just to finish those little bits there off. Watch how finicky you can be, but the amount of love and luster you can put. Now, if you put something just under there, there, not too big, these are way in the distance, boom, that's it. Now you only blend the bottom, leave the top alone. Leave that top alone, just grab the corner of your brush and dab it and pull it down into that wet sky colour. Okay, you can tickle the tops just a little bit, you really need to practice clouds and learn how to not to only do a cloud, but how to finish the ends off, how you want your tops to be finished. And this is coming down in the atmosphere into that grey, and it's put this one in front of that one, as you can see there. All right, now the rest of the clouds get done back to front, in my opinion. We have a hard bottom, and we blend the tops out, if anything, to give it that illusion they're coming over our head, okay? So I could probably start one, there's the bottom there. Do a bit at a time. That's the cloud. Give it some kind of substance within its body, like there. So we've got the bottom there. Boom. Pick up your blending brush. Now get from the bottom, you're adding turmoil. The turmoil creates lots of 
chunky love in your clouds wipe it straight away wipe it now I want to leave the bottom on these clouds blend them reasonably solid pull the, look at that and then blend the top up to somewhere there like that bring that down a bit there I just want to okay now we'll get another one right under here it's coming over that one over our heads again somewhere maybe like that bit of body within it bit of body fills in the gap there and when you blend that it makes all the turmoil and the thickness of your cloud so we're going to leave the bottom leave the bottom and then start blending this up pull that across there like that oh look at that see get used to pulling your clouds and all you need to do with a cloud is to find your method, the way, your recipe, how you're going to create them and stick with it. Don't change it. Don't go looking at too many other ways to paint clouds. You'll be so confused. You don't know what you're doing. It took me ages to feel how would I do clouds? What, what method would I stick to? I'm just sticking to this method because it works for me now. It might not work for you or it might. See, I'm just sort of distorting that a bit as well off the painting there. Now that's a bit too, we'll give that some kind of fluffiness there. Okay, just like that. Bring that into that, so it's part of that cloud. And then once you've done that, you can tickle the tops as well. So I'm gonna wipe the brush. Because some of these ones do have tight tops on them as well. When we do over here in Australia, I like to figure that out there. There we go. Now these brushes, sometimes, look at that, sometimes they do that. Just simply train it back and you'll get used to it. Wash them straight away. Let's put some more clouds on here. Now this is just pure titanium white. I want to come right over our head now. All this sky colour is very wet. I've got to get some tight, that's it, because it's going to push it in front of that cloud there. Boom. Find our bottom, just pull them a bit wherever you feel your bottom may be. There you go, look at that. They're all in line with that horizon line. Don't bring these up or down or bend them. You could sort of distort your clouds and you'll feel something's not quite right with me clouds. You donculated them, that's what you've done. You've gone and donculated your clouds. And I used to donculate my clouds quite a lot and it's quite frustrating when you've got donkey looking clouds. But anyway, we'll get this up there. I've left mainly the bottom tight and the top a half blended within the sky colour. All right. Now, if you're beginning clouds, do bits at a time because if you do too much, you could have trouble trying to blend them within. Now, I want to quickly break up some of this with some more tight colour. Boom. And maybe a bit over there, just like that. Get used to looking at cloud formations the way, the way they look and just try and use that image you've got in your mind of them and throw it into your canvas there okay and it pretty much works takes care of itself all right now this is a nice cloudy sky oh, i feel i just want something over that bit of a uh, horizony color there just to break up some of that so we'll we'll put something here as well something that's going to dig into that color there lighten it up now I want to get that bottom nice and level get it level all well, the paint I can feel the paint it's taken me a long time because I'm demonstrating in a video here but I can feel my paint starting to dry clagging up a bit it's still work bearable for me you don't have to work as on the pump as what I do all right there we go now leave your clouds like that but if you want to go the next step I'm grabbing my smaller fan brush and that colour which is dried now, all right, we'll get a little bit of this again with the magenta, the grey. And we want to get some storm colours. I'll put a bit of white in that as well, just to tint it a bit more. Uh, we want to get a bit of the grey and just put a little bit of storm colour in those clouds up top there. Not too much though, just enough to give it bullshit aspects, you know. So we'll sort of come within the cloud. And what I like to do is 
fan out some legs or finger type of things and you sit that down within the cloud body and then on top of this when you add your yumminess it gives that 3d look to your cloud see what that just done so let's see here we've got some digging in here digging in here boom boom you've got to merge it get used to merging these tones together and you'll be surprised once you've finally conquered clouds you'll be absolutely telling yourself my god is that all it was Okay, you can see what's happening to the sky now. It's starting to come alive. We can put some of this grey up here, whispering around through this white. Just lightly do it. Try not to overdo it. You can very easily get caught in the moment and overcloud your skies. And then we're going to add little bits of yumminess within that grey. Let's do one over here first. Wipe your brush. And you want to sit that down so it's not looking like a blob. You just, any part of the brush. And with a bit of luck, that's added the third dimension to your clouds. Let's go to this one over here. Where's a big chunk? Let's try a fine here. Boom, boom, boom. We're going to sit that luster down into that grey colour. But leaving, softening the hard edges, but leaving the luster there you see what i mean that one didn't work too well and um, we'll probably put a so so here i can continue that from there and maybe a bit on its own here not too much of this yumminess i call this the yumminess because it makes your clouds look your clouds look good but when you put this in it it makes people go yum i like that now i've dried this top area here where i'm going to put the mountains on but before i do that i want to get the watercolor in and there's two things you can inherit from a reference picture is subject and colors okay now a lot of people get caught what color do i make the water so i'm going to use this color here the gray color there looking at the reference picture like i said there's two things you can inherit from it is the subject now see this water here i'm looking and i'm looking i can see more or less the darker color of my sky i put in there now these Water is not going to have mirror image reflections of here either. You get a bit of sense of realism you can inherit from your reference photo as well. So I'm going to make my water that colour here, which was this colour here. And I'll add the blue appropriately. If it's going too dark or too light, I'll just keep doing it until I feel it's right. And I'll get it within this area. Now that doesn't need retarder because I'm not blending the way I did up in the sky there. So I can get away with just the craft paint first and then the watercolour. So I've got some of the craft paint here that doesn't have a lot of retarder in it and I want to prime in the water area, the lake. And why I'm using this paint is because it allows my colours to sit on the canvas in a more artistic way I feel. Now I'm just going to get it all, it doesn't matter if I go a bit beyond, this can be dried, alright. Now I might use this brush to even mix up the watercolour. I'm sorry the camera wasn't on i've got that paint that i mixed up the cerulean blue with the quinacridone magenta and i'm just painting that in cahoots with the horizon line and i've laid it on there now i've got a little bit more magenta in it and i'm just kind of doing the same thing again i'm doing some long scallopy but keeping them level with the horizon line getting some kind of values into that lake water down there okay let's try and put a yeah, darker band across here I just looked at the reference where you might feel there's some darker values if you want a sense of realism on your water I've just masked off the top so I don't get any splashes on the sky and I've put some water down to next to my craft white okay I spread that out like a sheet and you just simply get a flat toothbrush start in the water and then start pulling the paint in there and we'll get some kind of shimmer just hitting the water surface okay and we pretty much want to come all the way over that water surface with the shimmer it's just going to add shimmer in that water now i'm doing it lightly because i'm trying not to get any heavy blobs Now I'll have a quick look at the reference. No, there's not a really lot to indicate. So I'm just trying to see where I might be able to put some 
condensed light maybe around here somewhere that'll do it this will come into play once we've locked it in with all the the land okay now I've just gingerly penciled over my outline for my mountains again because I lost a bit of it and we want to start putting the distance ones in first and coming closer okay so we're going to start mixing the cerulean blue now I'm mixing this one with permanent alinza not the chronacridone magenta I want the permanent alinza in there just so we can get that distant mountain look there and I want to use a few values now what I'm going to do there's only little mountains there I'm going to Add the white let's get some of this and we'll start with the very distant one okay the very distant one okay now we'll get the now I want to get the horizon line which is just here for this mountain reasonably level lean on your something to keep it level okay just out there Now that mountain is just here, so we want to, let's get the top of it. The top can be painted hairy and broken up like, that's fine. Just get it there to this other mountain. And he's kind of coming upwards before it stops behind that other one there. Okay, and I want to draw it just so as I can add a hint of darker values to simulate some distance shadows and movement and shapes within that mountain just so it doesn't look like a flat object against our beautiful sky so what i have i'll get a bit of the this just the craft paint i'm going to grab a little bit of that i've just got a small fill bit here and i want to grab some of this just to lighten up a different value and we'll just stamp in some different shadowy shapes to con to create a contour of that distant mountain this is just insignificant bullshit that makes it look great so I'll probably come like that come off the mountain I've just wiped that brush and I'm grabbing some more white titanium white whatever you got and we just want to put a distance between that mountain and the next one now so this one's coming in front we want to get this dull okay it'll create distance between this mountain and the front one and then the same over this side just on this area here feel there's too much paint on your brush just Scrape it off and then merge that into there. Okay, I've got some burn umber and yellow here, and I want to mix up a very distant mountain color. So, pretty much got our yellow now, but it's a distant yellow, and I've got some forest green. And I want to mix that into that. And this is going to be my distant mountain where they're coming green now, okay? And that's looking okay. Now I've got another brush, just something I feel would work for that. And we'll get this in the background there. Just in front of this mountain now. So we're going to stamp it on, come in front of that mountain, bring it out into the water there get the water's edge this is coming into the water a little bit somewhere around there and we're just going to stamp this in for now so this is pretty much uh, this this one here make them nice and pleasant shapes at the top nothing too well that one behind should have went in first but we'll get to there and that one's going to go in front so we'll at least get this one here I'm just stamping it on, feeling the shapes I want for my own individual tree likes out there. So I'll grab a bit of white and pull this over here. I'll wet my brush so it's going to transfer a lot better than that. And we'll get this one 
shaped in here as well. Now let's get that down to there. I'll fix that up where they meet. Now I'm going to grab some of this colour that I've got over here and I want to get that within that colour there. So we're stamping all this colour in, it's distant green, but it's a bit closer than that by the feel. That looks good. Now I'll just grab a bit of white, I'll just wipe the brush, I'll, hopefully this will work. I'll just grab a bit of me titanium white on the brush and roughly the, the bottom area here I'll just stamp some atmosphere so it'll sit these mountains in front of that one I've just painted on there okay so we're just dabbing on like so blending it up I've just darkened this colour up that I had on there because because it's a commission job. I won't do want a bit of greatness in here. So I'm gonna come over this with some darker colours. Okay, now we'll just put this one back in front of there the way it should be, keeping that atmosphere between us and it. Now we'll put some darker values in this closer one, okay? So I'm going to grab a little bit of this permanent linserin and a bit over here under that colour. I'll mix it in, see? And we can kind of find mountain shapes within this body of land as well. Something like that, scrumble it in a bit. There we go. I'm just softening the hard edges. Now a tiny bit of white, just add to that the tiniest bit. There we go, look at that. Just enough to highlight some of that, okay? And just find your high spots. Tracing it down. I'm trying to make this mountain look like it's coming towards us. Just very gingerly. Nothing too dramatic, okay? And that's kind of slightly detailed, a distant mountain. Now I've just wiped the brush and I've got some white on there because where this one's going to come down, I want some atmosphere as well so we'll put it on somewhere there so wipe that and scrumble it into that mountain there do it in a pleasing way if you can I'm trying to please that up the mountain there Now I've got that burn umber and cad yellow again. I just want to mix in a base colour for the next mountain that's coming closer towards us. And so it's going to pretty much come all the way up here. And then I'll add the green. So now I'm going to leave that atmosphere that I've painted on there. Try and get that <laughs> coming down in a pleasing way. And this is going to jut out the water now. Coming along there, just covering up that atmosphere you put there. There we go. And then we've got to shape the bottom here, so which will be pretty much something like that. Something reasonably pointy out there. Bring it up. So these are kind of in cahoots with the horizon line as well, these ones here. I just want to block that in now and I'll dry that then I will can add me greens on there. This coming over to this side uh, where this is quite luscious into the water there. Bang! 
and then it just kind of builds up nice sweeping hills and come right up off the painting bang and we'll bring this to the foreground area and we'll shake the bottom bit here as well dry all that. Now I've dried these I want to mix up the appropriate greens to lay on there and some bits I might leave some of this showing through just as rock or dirt. So I want a light green first so that's how much light green I want. See the yellow I've put there and I'll mix it with the green. So we want a nice light green both sides of the brush and I want some nice flat field at the bottom of the mountain down there like it is in the reference picture. So it's pretty much there, look at that. And the bottom where it's hitting the water, come a bit beyond, it can be dark. So this is let's come up there, scratch it through. Just a nice light green. Now if I just put this green on the white canvas, it would have looked like translucent -y. So I'm going to look at the reference picture and it's got some bits going up here like that. So I'll just try and indicate that within the mountain. Now we want it a little bit more lighter. So I'm just putting some more yellow in there. Look at that, beautiful. And get this green more vibrantly, lawny looking. See that light color we put on there is darker than this, so it's acted like a darker value. There we go. Now I'm gonna just pull out some forest green with my filbert brush and start lacing in that mountain and we can just put a, just a littlest bit of yellow there just to turn the lights on on it and now I want to bring trees leaving some of that dark there that brown and I'll scoop it into that color there just like that and I'll meet it in just like that same up here you want dark where this meets that other colour. Leaving some of those browns within there, okay? So I'm just going to umbrella shape all these brush strokes down this mountain. Always conditioning the brush as I load it. Now it's important this bottom bit We've got to add some dark there. And that's another element of giving that sense of realism to the colours of your painting. Now I've got some black just to darken that bottom waterline there. Because it's important where... Now we just get along the bottom and like bleed it up. Bits here and there. Not a big solid line. Bleed it up. Because when we put the other appropriate greens in there this will make sense, okay? Probably could have some veins of darkness coming within this green as well. Just like so and um, I don't know, let's try something here. Mainly on the tops of that lighter green so this can shadow on top of it. Something up here. It's important if you can to get these little headland bits darkened up in spots as well. Not everywhere, just here and there, just to give it that sitting down realism look. Just with a 
bit of black there like that and see like this one here we'll see if this can do a bit just on the cape there just darken that down a bit very small all right so we had the yellow green now we're going to grab some i mean the forest green we're going to grab some of the yellow and start adding some highlights not really bright try not to do these with white and green you could mute your greens if you're not careful with the white and i just want to find the top and leaving this dark but crease this down appropriately because this is the green color of the mountain start at the top here leaving a lot of the darks within there okay Now you message me in the comments below if you like what I'm doing and if you like to support my content share it everywhere hit the thumbs up button and just know all my paintings are available to purchase Liz Kane asked if I can do this as a commission and I said absolutely that's what it's all about so if you want to do the same private message me on Facebook send a message request you don't want it to clash with that. There we go. Leaving that dark band there, but sinking it down. And then we can even slightly highlight this again, just in even lesser areas to give it the look of light hitting different high and low parts of our mountain. So we'll grab some more yellow over here. Very yellow green now. And we'll, let's see if we put a bit of red, what would that do? It's changing it from that green there. And I want to come now sit that light bit back yeah but coming in front there it's coming down the hill coming down the hill leaving areas and pockets coming down the hill there I just had a look in the monitor. I'm noticing quite a distinct hard line there and I'm not quite happy with that. So I'm just going to grab the um, forest green just on my brush. I'll put a teensy bit of black in it, but I want to kind of air that up a bit just to get rid of, come from within and then out just to get rid of that solid line there because this is a lot closer and there's no need to have such a tight hard line there okay and I'm just grabbing that highlighted color there again and just joining that within again there we go just got rid of that hard line you see and if you have a look at your work, sometimes it takes days after looking at it. You notice these little things wrong with your painting. Don't ever varnish it until you know 100% it's finished. Now grabbing this light colour again that we had over here, we're going to add that into here, which is probably all around here. Bring it to the edge of the water there. Right about there. And that can go up because if anything from that point to here is all flat then it goes up by the looks of it to me and then it starts radiating up the hill as well so we'll get that and we'll get bits of this in there as well but pleasingly and do i want any up there probably not but i'll put some there just for the art's sake 
Now I'm going to add a bit more yellow to that paint, just a little bit more yellow, just to get some more luster and brighter green there. Uh, we'll see if we could have, should have dried it. We'll see how we go. Now I want to sort of bring this down in the shape of the mountain, okay? There we go. Now see all the top of this stuff? I want a shadow on the top of it all. So when I put the other grass on, it's going to look like it's sitting underneath the shadow area there. Now I've just got some black on the um, my little detail brush here. I'll just put it up here. And I want to get the very waterline dark again along here. That's why when I put that green on, I wasn't really worried with it. this is the part that's going to detail that. Like I said, I want all the top of this just shadowed. Come over it a little bit to sink it in. We will be we will be putting shadows in here. Oh, Steve's in there. The rest just brought Steve in. And like I said, we want to get all this shadowed up there. It might look a bit weird now, but once we set the greens in this mountain hillside here, you'll see, ah, oh, you know, you'll go, ah, oh, that's what he was up to. And some of you might already, oh, I know what he's doing. Don't have to tell me. And we'll get up here as well. This will all be hidden. Wingle dingle it in there like that if it's a word. All right, now we're back with the forest green here. So we want to not get that. We want some of this dark just chopping out of the line there as well. And we want to umbrella shape this appropriately where the blacks is. Where the blacks is, where the black is or where the blacks are. I was trying to say both sentences at once. <laughs> Shadow there. And the highlights is what's going to sink everything forward and back from each other. So we'll come down here. So now this is going to look like it's going to cut in front of that green now. That's in front. And where the shadow is, like here, now it's behind. That shadow is going to add the perspective. And I've even put, you'll notice here, I put a bit of dark there because I probably want a little bit of other green floating within there. And if you don't have that darker value there, it's just going to look like it's floating. And then we'll highlight this. Now back here again, we're getting the yellow to our green. We'll go over here. Okay, and we want to add a little bit of this permanent alinsarin. Look at that. And then we'll start shaping our mountain. Now don't cover up everything. I want to go in front of that black there, in front of that green, right chop it off like that and then this side's going to hover to that black so it looks like there's depth perspective. See this line here? I'm going to come from there and bring it right across to there. So it looks like things are moving forward and back from each other, I hope. Is that looking okay? Yeah, not too bad. It's a bit stampy, but I am going to put another colour within this as well to kind of hide that effect from happening. So hopefully having that red in it gives it that sense of, wow, that looks quite all right. Now 
I've got to cut that other green off right to the edge there. That's it. Don't want to have a line on this side. You want it right there. There we go. And then this side can hover over the black. And that would look like just oh, a perfect lawn bit. But unfortunately, it's that big. No man and his lawnmower right on lawnmower can get up there. It's just nature's lawn up there. Now you can see what the shadows do in the right areas, okay? Now I'm going to highlight some of that just subtly. Subtly is the key. So there's that colour we used. Okay. And we want to grab our yellow now. Leave what's on the brush and it's probably enough. Because if I tried putting that in there, I'm going to keep adding more and more and more. It's just not going to happen. Normally the amount that's on your brush is plenty. So I'm feeling way out here. And down here under that ridge there. Now they're very thick there, so I'll my brush is distorted. See, that's this was an expensive brush, but the um, the bristles on it, the spade had out and distorted now, and it's not the way it was when I first bought it. And in other times, you can grab just a cheap brush from a hardware, and it lasts you for several years without getting hurt. Now, see. Where I put that other grass in front of that lighter colour grass here, you can barely see it, but once I put this there and bring it forward, it's going to sit that lawn area back. Okay? But I'm trying to do this gingerly. Yeah, that's okay. So I'm looking for high bits now. Coming down now, I'll sit that lawn back there a bit as well. I'm looking for ridges of light coming down, hitting stuff, okay? I'm not just going willy-nilly everywhere and continually stamping the same pattern over each one. And see, we'll get a little bit. Where are we? Maybe here, just over that dark. Some of it just over the dark there, not too much. And that's quite done, quite well done. We can put probably the slightest highlights over here. See how light I'm touching that? You've got to learn these strokes, whether it's heavy or soft. See what that's done? Just bits of light filtering down. Like We're going to put this in front of that lawn out there as well. Just very gingerly. Now I just want to put the foreground in using whatever dark colours I've got. So I've got black here. Uh, I've got some more forest green there. I'm just going to mix that up. I'll wet my brush and I'll just mix that on this flat. So we're going to come pretty much all in front of this, so come all in front. Now, you don't want this as a straight line, okay? Break it up, have it hairy. Get the shape the way you want. So I want this sort of coming up maybe there and then down here. So I've got the shape there. Now I'll get the edge of it quite in focus and hairy. Just This is just the dark colours. If you don't have the dark colours on your palette, just get a black. And then I want this bit sort of, I'm just hiding the edge of the water. So make sure when you're sh painting your lake in, you're not too shy on the edges, all right? And then we'll just bring this up here, leaving a little gap there like there is in the photo. So we'll get all this blocked in. This is quite an interesting photo, actually, the more I look into it and the more I'm painting it, because I find there's a lot of elements a beginner can learn to do on a first time or the first couple of paintings they do, because I'm pretty sure most beginners, they like to do a good, sensible seascape, landscape, lakescape, 
something like that. You do get these fantasy paintings where you might draw uh, a light bulb with a lot of fairies around it or unicorns or something. They're all fine as well, but at the end of the day, if you want to be an artist and have a wonderful art journey, I feel you do need to know how to do some good landscapes. So now I've got all the edge reasonably hairy and broken up the way I feel it needs to be, okay? All right, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I've just got a bit of white on a detail brush because there is this hint of a little town all the way down here. So I'm just going to put elements of white, okay? So that's what I'm trying to create here. Just, I'm going to wipe all the paint off that brush and then just blur that if I can. So I'll make a, just slight bits of blue within the white. Grab some red. Get some red down there. Just the colours of different distant buildings. And we'll see if we can get some of this. Now any heavy red that you feel is too hard, just kind of sit down a bit. Hoping when I look in my monitor that's kind of got the resemblance of some kind of small town down there. Now I've got a bigger fill, but I've got me green. All this here can just get mixed up with that green. I want a darker green. I'll put some of that yellow oxide that I've got there. I'll mix up this dirty colour. Let's put a bit of that in there. Beautiful. And I'll get some different values of this mixed up as I go. And oh, before I do that, I do want to get me little lawn just down here. So I'll quickly grab me yellow and some forest green again just to make that lawn colour way down there. Yeah, that's it. And so I want this to come down there. So I'll probably just dot that there. I want all this. Get it out there. To the edge. To the edge. You're going to have a slight bit of black there. And then this is all just filtering through here. From there. This is distance, this is a small perspective within your painting, okay? You'll see what I mean. Now I'm just going to pick up some more yellow on my brush only. Whatever's on my brush I just want to mix with the yellow. So we've got that there. Now I'm just going to mix this. There we go. It's Hopefully it's a brighter value. Yeah, there we go. Just to quickly come from the edges and scoot this across there like that from the all the way there there we go we've just got beautiful down there there's, a, there's quite a few acres down there and the caretaker for this island I don't know who he is he's got a ride on lawnmower and he has fun every Saturday mowing that lawn down there okay back to the color I mixed before now we're just gonna pretty much stamp over this black come right in front of that because this is in front now this is up the hill that's down the hill down there going by the reference picture. But we want the edge a bit scratchy, rough like that, coming across the painting. I don't want to bring this down. I want to bring this edge straight off, if anything, just more pleasing to the eye. Stamped into this black, get the edge nice and broken up so it's in focus. Out there is blurry, but up here it's all in focus. And we're just going to add lights and darks with this. I'm just going to jingle jangle this around. I've dried all that black. There we go, I've left some darks in there deliberately. Now we'll dry that. Now I'm just getting the leftover black that's on the board and the darker colour that was in my brush. So we'll probably put something from the very edge just coming forward here. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's cool. I want to start from the edge and just kind of bring it back 
scallop it into the painting. There's a bit of dark bit there. I'll take advantage of that. Yeah, that's looking all right. I want to come out of here a bit. And there is a beautiful little fence there. I want to incorporate into this as well. Now I've got me yellow and I want to mix the burnt umber with there again just to get that dead grass colour laced in with our grass colour that we're going to put on there. And I'm just going to kind of get near the blacks there, sort of in between the blacks and put a lot of this I'll get it on and then what I'm doing getting it on like that and then I'm stroking it into the area where I'm trying to paint okay get it on stroke it in now see here's a bit I'll scoot that down a bit now we'll just detail this now I just got forest green and some of this lighter color here so back out on the edge here, get it all scratchy, get your edge scooted within there, use what brush you feel, I don't know if this is brush is going to work good enough for what I'm doing here, but I feel it's, it'll do the job. Picking up some of the darker forest green. With that, and I'm just pretty much going over all these areas with some green. Okay, that same green, a bit more brighter. I'm adding some of that permanent lindrum with it now, just to get it closer and a different highlight to what's out there, okay? And I've got a medium fan brush here. I want to try and find, there we go, these lines sitting this in front of all those mountains there. Trying to keep it right there, sinking that back. And this is just the grass. Bring this over the greens. Over some of there, right to the edge and bring it down within your ground here, right to the edge. And you've got to be careful when you're using a fan brush, you don't get those grumpy mouths. We want sort of that kind of strokes with our brush just so it's not clashing with that grass down there. Like I said, this isn't well, this grass here is not well fertilized. It hasn't been mowed. All right, we'll just put a fence in here. And I've just got some gray mixed with burn umber. And I'll put like one coming down here. I want to kind of bring something in perspective there. I'll detail these. If my camera runs flat, I'll probably put one about here somewhere. So it's coming around there and there. And let's say one here, boom. Now adding more burn umber into that mix, I'm gonna create a shadow on the ground. So where's our sun? We'll probably get the shadows coming maybe this way. So you wanna kind of join the bottom of your, tr and then let's just kind of come out here somewhere. They're probably not loud and bright, but they're there, okay? So we've got one there. I'll get your brush. Uh, one here, boom, they can follow the shape of the land. Now if you feel these shadows are not dark enough, make them darker. Boom. Which I'm feeling they're quite not dark enough. Now I just want to quickly find some dark bits, say like on the tops of these posts. I didn't dry it, but you might want to dry your painting. I've darkened up the shadow, so I want, if anything, the tops of these quite dark. 
and you can scratch some shadowy bits down. So if anything, my sun's coming from the top right hand corner. Something there. Just so it looks like kind of rotten hollow, hollow timber. Get some dark in there and then we'll highlight it. And if you want, you can do this. Let's put a, a line there. There, 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 and there. Grab a script liner and you can come from within that and you can create a wire. Go to that side there. Don't pass it on the post because we're creating the illusion that it's coming through the post. And this can just come straight off the painting there to another post that's not in view, whether it's a big wire or something. But you put this within that black shadow hole there and just to there and then we change it up a bit when it's coming from this side boom you got me coming within there to that other mark and that's it from there boom straight off the painting it looks like it's going in the fence instead of just to it all right, I'm just going to quickly sign this and whack a frame on it. And just remember, if you want me to do a commission painting for you, private message me on Facebook. Yeah. Check out my links in the description below. I want to thank all my patrons who support my content every month. And become a member of my art group. Share your art there as well. Okay, I'll quickly whack a frame on this because my battery's ready to die. Here we go, that's not too shabby. We've got like a hillside valley lake down there with some distance, some beautiful clouds and a foreground fence. And just remember, you can do that and I hope you enjoy this painting, Liz Kane. Okay, thank you for watching. Share, like and subscribe. Check out the links in the description below. And if you like what I'm doing, you tell your friends, but if you don't, you tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck and good on ya.